Welcome to this week's lecture in scientific programming in Python. And in this week we are finally dealing with experiments and with making experiments. Um, but before I start, I encourage you all to look at the dashboard again to make sure that you actually pass the class. So if you don't remember it, it's dashboard.cyprog.de. And once you log in, you see your um, overall points. And you need 200 points to pass. There will be two homework and maybe a bonus left we are discussing on that right now. Um, so make sure um, that you actually reach the points you need to pass. All right, so let's start with this week, and that is with making experiments. Um, so this year, for the first time, I'm actually including PsychoPy here in this lecture. Um, because this is the first time in the three years of this class um, that PsychoPy doesn't suck. PsychoPy used to suck um, in the past two years. That's like, it used to suck really bad. It had years old dependencies. Um, they didn't have any active development. The active development started like one and a half years ago again. It could not be easily installed or its dependencies. There were hundreds of dependencies which are not simply pip install or something, but incredibly annoying. The dependencies were years old and deprecated for years with the newest instructions being years old. Uh, it didn't want on Linux at all and because it needed some um, GPU acceleration also didn't want in VirtualBox. It didn't support Python 3 until like one and a half years ago or less and Python 2 was dead since for more than 11 years now, it was swarmed with bugs, was hugely platform dependent, the bugs were different on each platform, that was really annoying, but now PsychoPy doesn't suck anymore and that's really good. So they started active development again, um, they started a new version PsychoPy 3, which works on Python 3, and it's really easy to install now. So I have uh, included a new environment here, um, which you find under PsychoPy slash PsyEnv, and you can simply update your um, current scientific programming environment um, using this command here. I also added the installation inst instructions to the um, general environment.yaml and if you go here, um, it's gonna tell you how to install it generally and you want to use the Anaconda Miniconda version. Um, you may have problems, so this here worked for me last year, I'm not sure if I would need it, so I didn't need it again next this year, so I'm not sure if you may need it. But yeah, it's easy to install now and many of the things I hated before are now gone and that's really nice. So when it comes to making experiment, um, there's a reason why PsychoPy is the by far most used one and that it, that it also has a really simple graphical user interface where you can create experiments using this nice drag and drop interface um, which you can then run from inside PsychoPy and people that don't know coding then analyze their data in Excel. And this is possible and the cool thing about this is that even the builder interface produces Python code from the experiment. So whatever you create using this user interface it's going to produce Python code. So for example the Stroop task from the tutorial on the website produces um, this code. We're going to look at that later if we have the time. Um, just now it produces legit Python code, which you could tweak afterwards. And how does it look like? Well, if we run it, so we see PsychoPy comes, Psycho comes with its own uh, user interface generally. So even if we were to use the coding interface, we could um, use the UI from PsychoPy. But what I want to show here is the builder interface where you can actually, so you create really by drag and drop. So I want to create a text stimulus, which I can give um, colors and all that kind of stuff. And then I can edit here. I can add, for example, um, keyboard responses. Um, and I could, for example, also I could insert a loop graphically here. For example, I want to run this five times. And before that, I want to have some kind of new routine Hello, um, where for example I run, I give a hello text, hello, now I can run this, 
I have to save it. Um, yeah, sure. And now if I run this from here, runs it in Python, and PsychoPy automatically adds the um, window where I have to add a participant and the participant number and then I have any text here and when I click, I, I, I'm repeating this five times, so it shows me the text until I press a button and it does this five times because I made this loop, right? So it showed me the hello text for far too quick, so I could also tweak this here and tell, well, the duration of this text is supposed to be longer using my graphic user interface here. And then I could also, for example, have conditions here in the trials by letting um, the by letting these, for example, the text here be defined by whatever I have in some CSV file, and so on and so on. And this then generates legit Python code. Um, no, we don't want to save this. So this is the thing that I just did um, as code. That is really nice for non-coders. Um, but we want to we don't want to create um, that kind of stuff using a drag and drop interface, but we want we are coders and we want to do we don't want to use the builder interface. If you want to see the code in action, there's this really nice um, 15 minute introduction video which shows how to create the stoop task here. Um, really useful if you want to get to know that, but we will look at the coder way of course.